After 10 years with the UFC and 26 fights under the promotion, that includes 15 performance of the night bonuses, Charles Oliveira is finally being rewarded with a big fight this weekend at UFC 256 when he takes on Tony Ferguson in a co-main event booking that has definite title implications. For people who've been following this sport for a long time, it's very satisfying to see Oliveira in the biggest fight of his career after all of these years. It's a booking that nobody saw coming, but the Brazilian could not be any more deserving of the opportunity he's being afforded this weekend. Oliveira has been putting on absolutely stellar performances against the elite talent in both the featherweight and lightweight division since day one under the UFC banner. And it's not even the first time he's been on the cusp of a title shot. It's just one of those situations where over the years, right when he gets to the big fight that would ultimately put him over, he'd falter. Whether it was taking a loss to Max Holloway, Frank Yegder, or Anthony Pettis, being at the forefront of the title conversation has eluded him all these years. Since making his return to the lightweight division back in 2017, things have been going his way. And because he can't speak a lick of English, the fans, media, and the promotion can not give him the attention he deserves all they want. But after stringing together a seven-fight win streak in the most talent-rich division in the sport, with all seven of those wins coming by way of stoppage, and six of those wins earning him performance of the night honors, he's giving everybody no choice whatsoever. He cannot be denied these big fights any longer. Despite the incredible career he's had thus far, amassing a 29-8 and professional record, and for as long as he's been around... Oliveira is still just 31 years old. He's been in his fair share of wars, but all things considered, he has maintained his durability, and as of late, he's been looking sharper than ever. Oliveira is an absolute joy to watch because he is a true technician, through and through. He has beautiful striking, keeps a very high guard, much like a traditional Muay Thai fighter, and has really active footwork, a high output of strikes, and is always moving forward. His kicks are especially beautiful to watch because the technique is perfect. He's always fainting with his legs and throwing jumping kicks and jumping knees. And he moves with the elegance of a ballerina. It's not that he has big power, but he has such diverse and dangerous striking. His record is quite deceiving because the vast majority of his stoppage wins come by submissions. But when you go back and have a look at the tape over the years, most of the fight ending sequences start by him hurting his opponent with a crazy elbow, knee, or punch, and then he latches onto them with his ultra-aggressive jiu-jitsu and ends the fight. Never mind his ground game. With so many fighters on the roster right now, it's so easy to overlook. But simply put, he may just have the single most impressive BJJ skill set in the promotion right now. I realize I'm not really saying much of anything here. I'm just sort of relishing in the fact that this weekend, Oliveira is reaching a much-deserved milestone with a big fight against a former interim lightweight champion, Tony Ferguson. He's been flying under the radar for just too long now, and it's about time that he gets this opportunity. As for Ferguson, well, what more can you say about that man? He's one of the most unorthodox fighters in the UFC, both inside the cage and outside of it. He's been on a serious role for many years now that has not only seen him in really big, high-profile fights, but also elevating him into one of the most popular fighters on the roster right now. This isn't to take anything away from Justin Gagey. Anybody who's seen my work over the years knows that I've always been extremely high on him, and I believe he is everything that he's portrayed to be. But... I do feel like Ferguson seemed kind of flat in that last fight against him. I can't put my finger on exactly what it was, but he just didn't seem to be himself. There are many reasons why that could be. The circumstances surrounding the booking of the fight, the subsequent cancellation of the fight, and then the quick turnaround or the rebooking of it. All of this happening right when we're in the very thick of the pandemic. There's also the fact that he unnecessarily did a weight cut just weeks before just to prove a point. Whatever it may have been, I just feel like that wasn't the best Ferguson we've seen. And I also believe that coming off of that performance and heading into this fight, Ferg is going to have his affairs in order and be very ready for this contest. Which is what makes this fight so compelling. When I think about how both of these guys fight, I just imagine that classic cartoon animation of a moving cloud of dust going all around the octagon with the fists and knees and elbows flying in from all angles. Or just until somebody finds their mark and ends the fight. Either way, Oliveira is finally getting his due, and if he can pull off what I believe he will this weekend, it's going to mean big, big things for his future, something that's well-deserved and long overdue.